All right. Watercolor challenge part two. I'm going back to back. I just filmed the, the cityscape painting that's off to the side. This is going to be a tape painting. This one's really fun to do. I'll be using, um, I'll use, do I want to use watercolor or do I want to use acrylic? I've got some acrylic paint here. You can use, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll use my acrylic, my green. Um, you can use your watercolor paint set that I just used. Or if you have some fancier paint, some acrylic. I'll use acrylic just so that um, when I take the tape off, it will show a lot better. Okay? So I'm going to get a brush. Let's go over our materials. Like I said, you can do this with... Um, you could use this for, with markers or with, with paint. I'm going to use it with paint. I'm going to use a acrylic paint. So you need your coloring material, whether it's markers, watercolor paint, or acrylic. If you're painting, you'll need a brush. You'll need a cup of water to wash your brush. And you'll need, I have just a little scrap rag that I use when I paint so I make any, uh, if I get anything on the table. Okay? So, I have this blue painter's tape. This is our last material. You need tape. So I use, you have to use either a painter's tape or a masking tape so that it doesn't stay stuck to your paper. I find that painter's tape is designed to come off, so that is the best to do. I'm working on my desk. Now, it's okay if I get my desk dirty. If it's not okay for you to get whatever you're working on dirty, I suggest putting some newspaper down or some other scrap paper. And what I do now is I'm just taking my, my uh, tape and I'm taping it all over my paper to make different designs and shapes. What you can do is, I have only the one size of painter's tape, but if you order the thinner kind and the thicker kind, um, you can get different shapes in there, right? Um, if you use an acrylic paint like I am, you can do one layer and then let it dry a little bit, take the tape off, or take the tape off, and then you could do another layer with a different color. And I'll show you what that means in a second. You're like, what is he doing? He's just taping, taping the paper. Okay. I'm using my Bristol paper again. This is meant for ink. Um, if you don't have Bristol paper, just get a watercolor paper or a, uh, you can use a canvas. If you have canvas, right, that's for painting. You can use a canvas board. Let me show you that. All just different things you can paint on. Right, like this, you can use a canvas board. Another cool thing you can paint on is if you take your cereal box and break it down and open it up, you got a, on the inside, you got a really nice piece of cardboard. So I'm using my paper. You can use anything you can find to paint on, right? If it's super thin though, maybe don't paint on that because the paper will fall apart. Okay, so this is a thicker paper. Uh, let's get to it. So I'm going to use my acrylic paint. I'm going to, what do I want to mix this in? Um, yeah, we'll just use paper. So, I'm gonna put a little piece of paper down like this so I can squeeze my green paint on. I'm gonna take my brush. Now I'm not holding it super close, I'm gonna hold it far away. This is acrylic paint, so it's different than watercolor, but you can do this with watercolor. You can do it with marker, whatever you have. So for this, remember I'm brushing. I'm not squishing my brush into the paper. I'm gonna be super careful on the edge because I'm gonna try to get as little paint on my desk as possible. Um, if you're in an older grade, you could do this on some cardboard and spray paint it. If your parents let you use spray paint, might get creative with it, but you tape it down, you paint it. It's okay if you get it on the tape because I'm going to tape take the tape off. All right, boom, just like that. Um, remember, if you're spray painting or using a, a, an oil paint or something, do it outside or in a room where you can vent it. This is acrylic paint, so it doesn't have any fumes, right? I'm not breathing in anything bad. All 
I'm, I'm pretty speedy with it. Um, but you can, like I said, you can take your time. I'm getting some on my desk, but I'll just make sure I wipe it off as soon as I'm done. Boom, just like that. Right? Okay. So, I've painted all of it. The tape is still there. Now, you could, I would let it dry a little bit before you take it off. Not completely, but a little bit. Um, I'm going to do it now. I'm going to remove the tape so that you can see it. Look at that. This part you got to do super slow and patiently. And if you do that, you get these super crisp lines. Check that out. Look at that. Put your tape to the side. Just be careful when you're holding the paper down, you're not using a dirty finger that has paint on it. Look at that. Satisfying. Boom. So now I've got my tape painting, like an abstract painting. Now what you could do is I could let this completely dry, tape it up, up again in different ways, and then do another layer. So I could have some different shapes in there, but I'm just gonna stop for today because you get the you get the idea. Check that out. And again, the trick is you want to let it dry a little bit, right? Not a lot, because if it's a lot, sometimes the paint will stick to the tape and then rip. But if it's still a little wet, you get these super crisp, clean lines. Check that out. So that's super fun to do with tape painting. Um, so my challenge for you is to get some painter's tape or some uh, masking tape. Tape down some paper. If the paper's smooth or the cardboard's smooth and not super rough, it'll be easier to come off. Um, you can't use a duct tape or like a clear plastic tape because if you do that, it'll want to stay to the paper. You want something that is designed to come off. So I use the blue painter's tape. That's super fun. Um, if you use watercolor, make sure it's washable if you get it on your clothes. Um, put on a smock or an old t-shirt if you don't mind getting it dirty. If you use a paint like acrylic, this stuff will stain your clothes, so be careful not to get it in, on your clothes. Um, when you're finished, you know, have someone take pictures of you while you're making the painting. Um, post those in the comments on Google Classroom, or um, you can post a final picture of your picture on Google Classroom, or send me an email with a picture, because I'd love to see what your paintings turn out to be, what they look like, um, and I will see you all the next art class. Have fun with the painting.